Good day and welcome. I'm Michelle, and in this video, I'll be painting one of my favorite birds, the American Robin. This video is not a tutorial, but a documentation of my approach to the subject. However, if you have any questions, please ask in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer. Now, this is my first video, so I'm still trying to figure out the ideal setup for film and editing. So there will be some instances where I'm blocking the shot, but hey, I sincerely tried my best and I'm still learning. Okay, let's begin. I'm painting on a stretched and primed canvas that is 18 inches wide by 24 inches high or 46 centimeters by 61 centimeters. I've toned the canvas beforehand so I wouldn't start off on a plain white background. Here I'm using oil paints and the colors I'm using are titanium white, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, rubine red, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, burnt umber, and black. All of the colors you see in this painting were mixed using this palette and I tried to reserve pure white and black for the highlights and shadows. Now this piece took me about 30 hours to complete and it has gone through quite the evolution as you will see later on. I hadn't really decided at this stage how much detail I wanted to include, but I knew I wanted to make this painting a part of a two panel piece known as a diptych. So I drew a rough sketch of the robin just so that I have an idea of its placement in relation to the subject in the second panel that I will be painting later on. I began by blocking in the basic colors and shapes. Now in my experience, it is better to work in layers with oils, so at this stage my concern is to get the paint down on the canvas as quickly as possible and then go back and layer in the details. I started off by painting in broad sweeping strokes using my number 8 hog hair brush. Now in my opinion when it comes to blocking in a painting, any brush that gets the job done will do. You can even use a house painting brush if it works. You'll just need to ensure that the bristles are stiff, durable, can hold paint well, and can be used with oil paints. Again the concern at the beginning is to get the paint down on the canvas as quickly as possible, but this is just one of the many approaches to blocking in a painting. If you're interested in a video about the types of brushes I found to be useful, let me know in the comment section below. Okay, I've got the painting blocked in for the most part. At this stage, I'm starting to think about the bird's environment and mood of the painting. My vision is to have the robin perched atop a tree I want the painting to have a feeling of movement and color. Imagine being out on a walk in the morning. The sun has already risen. The air is warm but slightly breezy. The world is awake. Sounds of cardinals, finches, starlings, chickadees, and sparrows fill the air. But it's the American Robin's greeting that gets my attention today and is my inspiration for this art piece. Having observed robins for a few years, I've come to enjoy and appreciate these industrious birds, from their nest building skills to how they nurture their young. Now, not everyone shares my enthusiasm for the robin, and that's okay. Anyone who have had the honor of being awakened at 4 a.m. in the morning by this bird will either find it a joy or a nuisance. I find it joyful. My spouse, on the other hand, has a different opinion. Actually, the bird in this painting is inspired by that very robin perched on the tree outside our bedroom window. Here's a story. I remember one time my spouse, who is a light sleeper by the way, was so annoyed at being awakened too early once too many times by this bird that he sprung up out of bed went to the kitchen, got a cup filled with water, and threw it at the bird. The water, not the cup just to be clear, thinking it will fly away. It did not work. The robin looked over its shoulder 
shook off the water, <laughs> hopped two steps to the left, and kept chirping, as if to say, thanks for the bath, that was refreshing. Having observed that encounter, I began to pay closer attention to the robin. Anyways, back to the painting. I've blocked in the robin now. So at this stage, I've turned my attention back to the sky and foliage. Here I begin to layer on the details and refine the shapes. Be aware the painting will go through an ugly phase after this, but please stick with me. I do manage to pull it together in the end. I'm using a soft sable brush, which is great for blending. The main subject in this work is the robin, so anything I do from here has to bring attention to it. One way of doing that is to soften some of the surrounding areas so that they recede into the background. This way, the eye is drawn to the main subject, our robin in this case. Another method to bring attention to the subject is by creating movement, by strategically placing secondary objects in the painting, which helps guide the viewer's eye. Another method, a third method, is introducing lights or shadows. I try to employ these methods to varying degrees as the painting progresses. When it comes to painting, you are the creator of this world on canvas, and with your tools of the trade, you get to tell the story.
Here at this stage, more details are added with each additional layer. I've switched to smaller brushes. I've also started to add in the mid-tones. With oil paints, I find it's best to work from dark to light. You also need a balance of warm and cool colors to prevent the painting from looking too muddy or chalky. I tend to jump around in the painting working on different areas of the canvas. This helps me to see the colors in relationship to each other. It also prevents me from focusing too much on one particular area, helping me to see the painting and the composition as a whole.
I think this is the point where I felt this bird was not looking like the cute robin that I had imagined. I also wasn't pleased with how I painted the leaves or the overall style for that matter. But I was determined to make it work and continue to refine the details, pushing the paint around on the canvas in order to get the desired shapes. But truth be told, I was starting to lose interest in this painting fast. Sometimes that happens. You go sprinting out the gate with enthusiasm and then you lose steam. You see, that's okay. It happens. It's part of the art process. At this point, I felt that I needed to reignite my interest in this piece. So I've decided to step away from the painting and return in a few days to look at it with fresh eyes. Please excuse my shoulder and head in this view. Yep, what can I say? I wiped out the leaves in the top half of the painting. That's the beauty with oil paints. If you don't like something, just wipe it out. I felt the tree was taking attention away from the robin. I wasn't getting the desired movement in the leaves overall, so I changed their shape. I also opted for a more lighter, romanticized vision for my composition. Don't be afraid to start again. Trust the process and have faith in your abilities. Remember what I said earlier? You are the creator of this world. And with your tools, knowledge, and experience, you get to tell the story. For me, it's not just about the painting. It's about self-exploration, learning new ideas, and telling what I hope to be an interesting story. Once I've changed direction, I finally saw my vision up here on canvas. Well, here's the final result. If you made it this far, thank you. And I hope you enjoyed this video. To learn more about my works, 
visit my website, michellemontague.com. You can also follow me on Instagram at fullmontague. Let me know in the comment section below if you want to see more videos like this or if you have any questions. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, consider subscribing. It gives me motivation to keep making more videos. Until next time, take care and good day.